Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and it has been a couple of days now since Death Stranding released on PC. For me, I think this is an interesting game to look at for a couple of main reasons. First being that it is one of the first formerly PlayStation exclusive titles to come to PC. Secondly, it is also the first time we have seen Guerrilla Games' Decima engine on the PC as well. That is the same engine that was used to great effect for Horizon Zero Dawn. Because of that, I thought it'd be a great time to test out this new game on PC, so I spent the last couple of days benchmarking a variety of graphics cards to see just how well they perform in Death Stranding. Before we dive into that though and look at all of our testing, I just want to take a quick moment to say if you like this kind of content, if you value our honest and unbiased reviews, please do hit that subscribe button as it would really help us out and it also means that you can get to be among the first to see our videos when they go live. Thank you. Getting right to it though, it's worth noting that Death Stranding on PC only runs in DX12, so there's simply no DX11 option. For a console port as well, there are certainly some image quality settings that you can adjust, but not loads. Primarily, we have some model quality settings as well as the memory allocation, while there are also options for screen space reflections, shadow resolution, and ambient occlusion. I would imagine most people though will simply stick to adjusting the presets. These range from low, medium, default up to very high. As I understand it, default is the console equivalent setting, so that would be what the game would look like if played on PS4. But obviously we are a PC channel, we're going to be doing all of our testing with the very high preset. Another key feature to note is support for DLSS 2.0 if you have an RTX GPU and you can choose between performance and quality modes. However, we are going to come back to this in a little bit. For our benchmarking run today, we tested a section early on in the game where Sam has to make one of his first deliveries to the way station west of Capital Knot City and he's running over some hilly and rocky terrain with a few rivers as well. All of our testing was done on our recently updated GPU test system from PC Specialist and that is built around Intel i9-10900K overclocked to 5.1GHz on all cores and that is paired with 32GB of 3600MHz DDR4 memory and an Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard. Lastly, the only other thing left to say is our use of drivers. So we use the latest game ready drivers from both AMD and Nvidia. So for Nvidia, that was the 451.67 driver. And for AMD, we use the Adrenaline 20.7.2 driver. Diving right into our results now, we will kick things off at 1080p and starting at the bottom of the chart and working our way up. Here, the first thing we need to talk about is playing this game on very high settings with a four gigabyte card, as that honestly doesn't seem like the best idea. Cards like our four gigabyte 5500 XT and 1650 or 1650 Super definitely suffered a bit here. Not so much in terms of the average frame rates, but certainly the 1% lows are nowhere near as tight as our other cards with more VRAM. This is perfectly illustrated by our 8GB 5500 XT, which actually delivers a 20% performance improvement over the 4GB version. If we do step up to a 6GB card, the legendary GTX 1060 is significantly smoother for 1080p gaming, and honestly, I think this card really is a perfect 1080p 60 frames per second GPU in Death Stranding. So definitely very good news if you do have a 1060, it is still far and away the most popular GPU according to the Steam hardware survey. As we head towards the mid to high end cards now, one trend that stood out to me here is just how well AMD's Navi cards do in this game. The 5600 XT really does smoke the RTX 2060 and it almost matches the 2060 Super. While if we look at the 5700 XT, this card is actually marginally faster than the 2070 Super and GTX 1080 Ti. So not bad at all for a GPU which costs about 400 pounds. For the absolute best performance going, however, you will need a 2080 Ti, and that averaged almost 160 frames per second using the very high preset, with the 2080 Super about 20 frames slower. Stepping up now to 1440p, 
Honestly, the results don't really suffer too badly from this increase in resolution. I don't think you need a locked 60 FPS in this game as it's hardly fast paced, but I'd say the RX 580 delivers a decent enough experience at 1440p, pushing over 40 frames per second at all times. If you do want a locked 60 FPS, however, we don't hit that until we get to the RTX 2060. However, a 1660 Super and Vega 56 are not far off at all. Both 5600 XT and 2060 Super are effectively tied at this resolution, delivering around 80 FPS on average, while the 2070 Super, 5700 XT and GTX 1080 Ti are all just below that 100 frame threshold. Once more, it is very competitive performance from the Navi GPUs here. To push past that 100 FPS mark at 1440p though, you will need a 2080 Super which delivered 104 frames per second on average. While again, if we step up to the 2080 Ti, that is about 15% faster, hitting 120 FPS on average. So we've covered 1080p and 1440p, but what about 4K gaming? Here, a significant number of our GPUs couldn't even hit 30 frames per second, with the Vega 56 actually the first GPU on our chart to hold above 30 frames per second at all times. Even then, personally speaking, I really wouldn't want to play this game at 4K with anything less than a Radeon 7. Something like a 2060 or 2060 Super will hold above 30 FPS at all times, so it does depend on how smooth you like your gameplay, but for me, I really would be wanting to hold above 40 FPS at all times, so that does mean a Radeon 7 or better. Once more, cards like the 5700 XT, 2070 Super and 1080 Ti are pretty much all in the same ballpark as they never drop below 40 FPS but average around the 50 to 55 FPS mark. If you do want something to hold 60 frames per second at all times at 4K using the very high preset, you are going to need a 2080 Ti. It simply is the only card capable of doing that where it averaged 72 frames per second with its 1% lows coming in at 62 FPS. So clearly 4K performance is certainly a tough nut to crack, but if you have an Nvidia RTX card, the company really does have an ace up its sleeve with support for DLSS 2.0. In the settings, you can choose between the quality and performance options, and for our testing, we went for the quality mode. We are gonna come on to the performance and the benefits of using this technology in a little bit, but first of all, it is worth looking at the image quality as DLSS has certainly had a bit of a checkered history, but with DLSS 2.0, Nvidia will certainly hope it has turned a corner. In a nutshell, I have to say DLSS 2.0 looks really, really good in Death Stranding. Compared to native 4K with TAA, I'd say it'd be nearly impossible to say which was which without knowing beforehand. If anything, I think DLSS can actually look slightly sharper in some areas, and that really is saying something. Considering how far this technology has come in less than two years, it really is impressive stuff. If you have an RTX card, I really would urge you to try switching to DLSS and seeing what you think of the image quality, as personally, based on my experience playing the game and these little footage clips I put up here, I really don't know if you're going to be able to tell the difference between the two. So again, really, really impressive stuff. Performance wise, the uplift in frame rate is significant. With the RTX 2060, we couldn't quite hit 4K 60 as Nvidia claimed, but we did come very, very close to that. And it is certainly a much, much smoother experience than playing at native resolution. Similarly, our other RTX cards saw frame rate improvements between 40 and 50% from native 4K to DLSS upscaled 4K. Considering the performance benefit as well as the fact that the image quality is simply fantastic, I really do have to say that DLSS 2.0 is a fantastic addition to Death Stranding. So once more, if you do have a Turing RTX card, I really would suggest you give it a go and see what you think. If you have been playing this game with DLSS enabled, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So then, wrapping up this video, I have to say I've been really impressed with Death Stranding. It may not be as easy to run as something like Doom Eternal, but it certainly looks very, very good. And for any 1080p 60 frames per second experience, 
a GTX 1060 is all you will need. Those with 4GB cards though will probably want to dial back from the very high settings that we tested with here. But it is also good to see that the AMD Navi GPUs do particularly well in this title with cards like the 5600 XT and 5700 XT definitely punching a bit above their weight. As for the game itself, I'm going to be brutally honest and say really not for me. I found the first couple of hours I played to be very slow, very tedious, lots and lots of cutscenes and the actual gameplay isn't really my cup of tea. However, clearly some people do like this kind of game. It has seemed to be generally pretty well received. So if you have been waiting to check it out on PC, from a technical perspective at least, I can definitely give it a thumbs up. I do think it is a very, very good looking game and it does also perform very well. So you don't even need a crazy high end card. Something like a GTX 1060 or RX 580 is going to be more than enough for your 1080p gaming needs. That is going to do it for this video though guys, so if you liked it, toss us a thumbs up and if you haven't been playing the game, drop me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Like we said, it'd be great if you guys would consider subscribing so you can see our videos first. And if you like this t-shirt I've been wearing, we will leave a link to our merch store down in the description below. Lastly, we'd also love to chat with you guys so you can join our Discord server, again, linked in the description. Until then though guys, that is going to do it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.